often in the news these days, both in the devastating aftermath of Hurricane Michael and the state's role as a key political battleground heading into next month's midterm elections. But still casting a long shadow over the state is the impact of the mass shooting at a Parkland High School last February, in which graduate Nicholas Cruz went on a shooting spree that killed 17 students. Several of the survivors, including students and parents, emerged from that incident as activists, advocating for such issues as school safety, gun control, and mental health. Among them is Max Schachter, whose 14-year-old son Alex was among the victims. He is currently visiting Israel and joins us in the studio. Max, first of all, thank you so much for uh, joining us Absolutely. on The Rundown. Uh, talk about what brings you to Israel, how it's connected to what we just talked about what you'll be doing here. I haven't been to Israel in 30 years, and with this tragedy, I am so glad that I'm here. I got invited to be with the JWRP men's trip, and it's been transformational. I had a lot of questions about why this happened to my son, why my son was murdered, why 17 innocent victims were taken from us, and I got a lot of answers that I didn't expect, and um, I, I'm going to be going home next week a different man. What kind of answers? Tell us a little bit more about that, because the United States has a very different gun culture than Israel. It has a phenomenon of school shootings that really does not happen anywhere else in the world. What struck you about what you've seen here? Well, I came here for two reasons. I came as part of the JWRP trip and uh, to really uh, you know, bring Americans to Israel to re-identify with their Jewry and also to support Israel and also to grow as a person, be a better father and be a better uh, be a better son and improve as a person and just get in touch with my myself and I, I've accomplished that and then that was last week this week I'm with a homeland security group where I'm going to schools seeing what schools are doing in Israel so I can take that technology back to the United States what is your takeaway on that? What would you want to take back to the United States or tell lawmakers, hey, uh, maybe this should be done there? Absolutely. The main difference between schools in the United States and schools in Israel is there's a fence around every Israel school and there is a guard at that fence. There's a single point of entry. At Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, there were multiple ways that you could get in that school and there's no, uh, there's no fence there. And uh, there's no deterrent. That's what we need. That's what we saw at airports after 9-11. That's what we saw at federal buildings after the Oklahoma City bombing. And that's what I intend to do at schools so that they're not soft targets anymore and the killers will think twice about attacking the school and they won't do it. And it'll save the lives of our children and our teachers. Max, of course, what you're describing in Israel comes out of a general culture developed over decades of a greater security awareness. Of course, we see that in shopping malls here. We see it in many places which you wouldn't even think of it in the United States. Do you think that the U.S. is going to be ready, especially around schools, for example, to, to adapt that kind of outlook? In 1974, you had one school shooting in Malot where many, many children were innocently murdered. You changed everything in Israel and We've had almost 20 years of school shootings in the United States, and I am going to be fighting and pushing Congress and forcing everyone to make the necessary changes. Our children need to be safe in their classrooms. This is the this is ridiculous that I and I and our children are safer going to libraries than they are going to their schools. It's got to change, and I do believe that we are make, going to make those changes. I have been since February. I've been advocating for national school safety the best practices and in the United States I feel that we are on the verge of doing that I've gotten commitments from the federal government that they're going to be doing this and I'm very excited about the next couple of months as someone who experienced the effects of this in the most direct way possible are you ever concerned that adding more security is somewhat of a band-aid and won't eradicate the issue because we're talking about thousands upon thousands of schools across America that there can never really be enough security enough people who are prepared especially when we're talking about people at the schools actual students being the perpetrators uh, of course, it's a concern of mine. You know, there, there's no there's no silver bullet. It's a holistic approach. But the first thing that needs to happen is we need to have a perimeter like they have in Israel. Uh, and Israel has made their schools safe. They haven't had an attack 
in a long, long time. That can be the same in the United States. We can do it, and I have the support. We just signed a letter, Senator Marco Rubio and myself worked on this letter. We had 34 congressmen and senators advocating for the creation of a clearinghouse a repository of national school safety best practices and also to get the five federal agencies that are working on school safety working together collaborating and producing some some necessary results after 20 years of children being murdered max we have seen in the u.s that after an incident of like happens these issues that you're describing dominate discourse political discourse they dominate in the media for a few weeks, and then it seems the American public moves on. Now we have uh, elections coming up, midterms in the United States, in your state of Florida. I know some of the other parents of Parkland victims have involved themselves very directly in that. They've endorsed candidates, even done commercials. You, to the best of my knowledge, have not. But not taking it as a partisan issue, do you think that the uh, political establishment for example, in these upcoming races that are addressing this issue enough, or has it in fact sort of, again, the public's attention, the politicians' attention has, has moved on a bit? Listen, I feel the main reason why these school shootings continue to happen is because people don't think it's going to happen to their school. Then that's a fallacy. This can happen. If it happened in Parkland, it can happen everywhere. People need to, uh, you know, advocate for their school boards to make their schools safe. We can make schools safe, and that's what I'm committed to honoring Alex's legacy and the other 16 victims so this doesn't happen again. Uh, on that note, you mentioned uh, your communication with congressmen on this issue on school safety. If you had an opportunity to speak directly to the president, what would you want to maybe tell him about your experience over the last eight months and what you want to see happen in America? I want two things. I want the clearinghouse created. I testified at the White House uh, in June. I met with all four cabinet secretaries prior to my testimony to the Federal Commission on School Safety, and I advocated for the creation of a clearinghouse because schools are at, they don't know how to make them safe. I, as a parent, was in charge of vetting all the companies that wanted to come into our school to make our safe. If we have a clearinghouse that has all the best practices that are formed by all the stakeholders involved, by all the law enforcement and all the first responders, then we can push that down to schools. Schools will then know how to make them safe and we can protect all children. And I do have confidence that this White House is going, is, has school safety as a priority and we'll get it done. All right, uh, just briefly, we don't have a lot of time left, but at the heart of all of this is your son's memory. Alex, if you could tell us just a little bit about yeah. it. My little boy was so sweet. Uh, he loved basketball. He loved uh, playing his trombone. He was in the marching band. And uh, right before he got murdered, they won the state championship. It was uh, the happiest day in my life. And, you know, every day I wish he was here. Um, and I know he's with me every day on this journey and uh, continue to make children safe. A life can change in a moment. Lessons learned.